Claire Tansy's Kitchen. I am Claire Tansy. This is the 20 Minute Cooking School and today we are cooking a beautiful steak. Lot of requests for how to cook a steak in a frying pan. Uh, and so gals and guys, uh, dudes, dudettes, that is what we're going to do. The first thing you're going to do is use your cast iron frying pan. So. I really want you to buy a cast iron frying pan. I have no investment in cast iron in general, but if you like steak and you want to cook it inside, like this is the time. You need a cast iron frying pan. A non-stick pan just doesn't get hot enough, and a not non-stick pan that isn't cast iron uh, isn't non-stick enough. I know that sounds insane. I know that sounds completely insane, but you need your cast iron pan nicely seasoned. Uh, I'll put up lots of links to um, all my guides on how to buy it, how to use it, how to other stuff you can make in it. So this is the time. So you get your cast iron frying pan out and uh, you turn the heat on high and then you kind of do everything else because this needs to heat up for like I'm going to say fully two minutes and maybe even more. So then we have this opportunity to talk about the steak. Thanks everybody, nice to see you all. Welcome to Claire Tansy's Kitchen. We are cooking steak today. If you have questions about uh, cuts or cooking or pans or things like that, um, fire away. I'm very far from my phone so I can't quite see the questions but I will do my very best and of course I will stick around and answer them all uh, right away when we're done. So most of the work that goes into making a steak delicious happens, in the words of Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, before you even buy it. So it's all about the way the animal is raised, the way uh, it's, you know, uh, the slaughtered, butchered, packaged, all of that stuff. So you kind of gotta, if you like steak, you sort of have to invest in a half decent steak. That's all I can tell you. I'm gonna open the window. Just remember about the window. So this is always a good idea when you're cooking something and you don't want to turn the fan on. Which, by the way, I have a new fan. You can't see it because it's so low profile and I'm so happy I have it. Okay, so yeah, like I said, most of the work that goes into a delicious steak happens before you even buy the steak. So buy a good steak and that can mean mostly two things. Three things. I don't know, maybe let's, let's see where we get to. Let's count up to two and we'll take it from there. Um, one, you can go to a really nice butcher, um, invest a, a good chunk of change in a steak, uh, you know, that's from like a local small farm where they like raise it on acorns or whatever. Uh, and it's usually butchered very nicely. When they're butchered um, in smaller shops, they're butchered very nicely and so they're usually a little bit more intact. Um, now, you can go ahead and buy a ribeye or a steak, whatever steak, or <laughs> give away the big secret. You can, um, you can go ahead and buy the steak at the grocery store, um, I mean, in Canada, for my Canadian friends and family who are watching, we have access to truly the world's best beef. I've eaten beef all over the world, and Canadian beef is like bar none the best beef ever. And that's even the kind of semi okay stuff you buy at the grocery store. Because the key to getting a delicious steak is you want to buy the right cut. Um, you know, don't go buying a crappy old piece of, of lean, uh, thinly, thinly cut steak and expect it to be delicious. No, you need a couple of things. You need a good tender cut uh, and you need a good nice thickness and then you're going to cook it right. So good tender cuts, my favorite are ribeye and strip loin. This is a ribeye, both, uh, both will be boneless, a lot easier to cook something that's boneless. So that is a ribeye. Uh, there would normally be a bone, it's kind of from in here. <laughs> Don't you just love it when I use my own body to reflect that of a cow? Um, so yes, exactly, Mike Tansy, nicely marbled. And marbling just refers to um, all those little white, white bits in between the fibers. Uh, fancy term for that, intramuscular fat, ordinary term for that, marbled. What that means is it's going to be delicious, fat transmits flavor. Two, it's going to be tender. Uh, first of all, because it's not a very highly used muscle, and also that fat is going to kind of disappear and uh, leave the fibers of the meat so delicious and tender. And three, I can't remember what three was. I'm having a hard time with numbers today. So ribeye strip loin, please note, not sirloin. I know they sound alike, and certainly when you're reading the label, it looks like sirloin and strip loin. But it ought to just be right next to each other. Not sirloin, strip loin, and ribeye. 
Okay, so things are like getting quite hot and heavy here. If you're just tuning in, this is my cast iron pan. It has been preheating now for five full minutes. And I like to use a little, little trick that my mother used, um, which apparently was a James Beard thing. And instead of putting salt um, on the steak, I'm actually gonna put salt in the pan. And I will also tell you that this steak is very nice and dry, but if your steak wasn't dry, just like you want to make sure to pat it dry with paper towel before you do this, um, before you cook it this way. So I'm going to take about a teaspoonful uh, of kosher salt, use about half that much if you're using regular salt, and just make it snow. Don't put any pepper in here because pepper will burn. Oh my god, why does the dishwasher always go off when I'm right in the middle of the show? So, as I said, pepper will burn, other spices will burn, so you want to save those till the, the end. How about filet mignon? So, a good question about filet mignon. It's going to be tender, but I don't think it has a lot of flavor. It's going to be super tender, but it doesn't have that intramuscular fat. And uh, if you're going to cook it, cook it hot and super fast, and then have some kind of really nice sauce to go with it. That's what I would say about tenderloin. Good question. Okay, so now this is nice and dry. We've got... Um, salt in the pan. Pan is absolutely screaming hot. Normally I would have the fan on like full full blow. Steak goes in and then I'm just going to press it down so that I can make sure that the entire surface of the steak is uh, making contact with the pan. I'm going to have to turn the fan on low because otherwise the um, smoke detector is going to go off. So you just sort of press that down nice and gentle. <coughs> Off. That's a very good sign. Now this, I'm going to leave that for one minute. Just chuck this. Clean as you go, my friends. Clean as you go. Makes for a very happy cooking life. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for about a minute. And um, what's going to happen here is also not touching it. You're not going to like check it. And flip. Oh man, you see what I mean? I'll be right back. that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, Thomas sleeps through the fire alarm, which is terrible, terrible, but it's like an indication of how often we set the fire, fire smoke alarm off. Okay, gang, we got, the steak is going on here. You can tell how hot it is. So one minute, and I'm not moving it around, I'm just letting it be. And now I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to sort of move it around so the, the raw edge picks up all that delicious salt. All right, here we go. Oh, yes. Oh yes, I'm gonna kind of do that, and then another minute. Can you see? Can you see the beautiful golden brown crust? So good. Uh, <laughs> well, it's real life, right? Jen, like the fire alarm's gonna go off. Um, I know, right? When the smoke detector goes off, you know it's dinner time. Yeah. Oh yeah, pot roast. I mean, it's just one of those things. It almost doesn't matter how good your fan is. It, I, I feel like they need to develop a smoke detector for cooks that like only goes off. Oh no, no. Get somebody, get a Kickstarter, do, do something. Okay, so as you can see, this is now sizzling and this is full blast. I've got the cast iron pan on full, full, full blast. Um, it's not gonna burn because it's the cast iron pan. It's not gonna burn because of all that beautiful intramuscular fat. And um, it's just not going to burn. And also what's going to happen is it's going to get that beautiful brown crustiness. I think if push came to shove, and I had to, had to, had to, had to say what my favorite food was. It's a ribeye. Ribeye is the best. Okay. So has that been about a minute? Roughly. Okay, so now I'm going to keep cooking it for about another two minutes, flipping it about every 30 seconds. Um, and this is, oh yes, this is new information to me about the, the frequent flipping. Um, I used to be like, okay, you just put it down, let it cook for two minutes, flip it over, let it cook for two minutes, and then take it off and let it rest. So I was reading my favorite food scientist, Harold McGee, and he was saying that actually the more frequent flipping um, does something good with the juices. So it turns out real good. That's all I can tell you. It turns out real good. 
And what's also happening is as the fat is coming out of the steak, it's kind of it's kind of making the temperature of the pan do a bunch of different things. Anyway, life is really good here. And so that was about 30-ish. Oh my goodness. That steak looks so good. I, I promised Thomas that he could have this one for dinner. Um, it's his favorite food too. But Mike's not going to be home. My partner's not going to be home till late. So maybe I'll just tell, tell him that all we have left is tofu. We love tofu, but I would a little love steak. Another 30 seconds or so. Okay, so now, how do you know it's done? So, does anybody out there take their steak well done? Can I get a like, can I get a heart, can I get a high five? Well done, people who eat it well done. That's interesting, okay, so zero. Listen, no judgment, I don't care. So well done, you're gonna go for about a total of eight minutes in the pan. So you know, you're one minute, then you're one minute, then another about six minutes. Mm, no, you know what, maybe 10 minutes total. So one minute, one minute, then about another eight minutes of the, with the flipping. So that's gonna take you well done. Medium rare, that's pretty much, I like rare to medium rare. So you do, um, so for rare, rare, that would be, you know, like red in the middle, that would be flip, one minute, one minute, and then about another two to three, like two to three minutes. This is about a one and a half inch. Yeah, one, about a one and a half inch steak we're talking about here. And this is 500 grams, so this is gonna feed two of us. Okay, so lots of, lots of um, calls for medium rare. Okay, so one minute, flip one minute, and then flip it for about three to four more minutes. Oh, blue, please. Kelly Jones, you can have blue, which is just one minute, one minute, and out she comes. That's very easy. Oh, look at this thing. Yeah! It looks really good. So I'm just going to do one more flip, I think, and then we are going to be done. And then we will get to the most important part, which is the rest. Now, you're going to say, but how do I know if it's done? And isn't, do I need to use my... I, I, I don't know what. Like... The only way that you're absolutely going to know that it's cooked is if you use an internal uh, a thermometer. And if you want to use a thermometer, like you can't go through the top, you gotta to go through the side, you gotta pick it up and go through the side. And for you can find these numbers on the internet, but uh, about 120 for uh, rare and then up from there. Okay, I'm turning this out off. And we're going up white. Sorry, did you want my address so you could come over? Ah, oh, I'm very sorry, but you cannot come over. Woo! Let me move this puppy. You are a big smoking. This video makes my university going son very happy. Well, good. So this is something, it's very popular. I get a lot of requests for it. It is just um, a steak cooked in a pan. Now, as I said, we are going to let this rest. This is the most, this is the, seriously, this is the most important, I know, they're, they're all important. They're all my favorite children, but this is a stage that often gets overlooked because um, you're like, crumbs, that looks delicious. I'm gonna eat that right now. The rest is critical. Just good, you know. Uh, I like to say that, you know, if you ever go to yoga, I'm looking at you, Mike Tansy. Maybe you do like to go to yoga. And at the end, they always give you five minutes of savasana. And it's like, you know, they tell you that your body's gonna absorb the nutrients of your practice. Well, you may not believe that, but I can tell you that resting a steak is just as important as resting the turkey when it comes out on Christmas day. So um, you gotta let it rest. It's, the juices will redistribute. It gets, just gets a not, it's just, it's good. It's good. And don't worry that it's gonna get cold. Now this, I serve sliced. So this is 500 grams and you're gonna probably end up buying 500 grams because, <laughs> okay, yogurt, not yoga. Oh, good enough, I also like yogurt. That was last week's episode. Um, this is 500 grams and you're going to have to probably get about 500 grams in order to get a steak that's thick enough. So you need to get that inch and a half. Uh, thicker is also fine, but if you see those little, um, you see that there, there. You see those little steaks that are only a half an inch thick just, you know, skip it. Go to the, look, there's even a butcher counter in my local crummy little grocery store. The guy who runs it, 
I'm a little afraid of him, but he'll cut a steak for me. And you just, you know, you need to have that thickness. So it means you're gonna have about 500 grams, which is a lot. Um, you know, that's a pound of meat. So we would do, we would share this between two people, or if Thomas was home, um, we would do two steaks between three people because he can almost eat a whole steak by himself. And that delights me. And getting, you know, good protein into that child. Moms, you know what I'm talking about. So the rest is going to happen. And then I'm just going to slice this up and serve it for dinner. Now, I like mine rare to medium rare. Um, and I do the finger test because that's how you test it in a restaurant. So I will just show, mm. oh, not bad. So I love Sobeys. I'm just telling you that the butcher at Sobeys is a little bit scary. And he has a twin brother, which is double scary. And he also works at Sobeys. Anyways, um, you'll see restaurant chefs teaching you how to test a steak by poking it. Um, there is a methodology to it. So... We have four minutes, I can show you this. It's kind of funny, you shake your hand out. Your non-dominant hand, so I'm right-handed, so I'll shake out my other hand. And then you just sort of like, imagine you're about to put your hand flat on the floor, uh, again, in yoga. And you take your index finger of your other hand and you press that fleshy bit right there. Make, making sure your fingers are really stretched out, you press that fleshy bit. That's what raw, raw, that's raw, okay? That's what raw steak feels like. So then if you want your steak to be medium rare to medium, you make yourself a nice, good, strong fist. That's really more medium than medium rare. And you feel that fleshy bit again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's sort of, when you see people poking steaks, that's a way to see if it's done ish, very, very unscientific way, uh, by poking it. The thing that, I mean, poke it because the more you poke, the better you'll understand it. And then the next time you cook a steak, you'll get to have that muscle memory. So that's about medium there. And if you want it to be um, about well done, then you <laughs> press your nose. Um, is it true that acidic salsas and other condiments help you digest steak by breaking down the not sure what? I have no idea, Kelly. Has anybody ever heard that, that acidic ingredients help you break down no idea. The closest I can bring you to that is that vitamin C helps to absorb iron. Um, <laughs> there's enough iron in here to keep you in iron for the rest of the week. Um, but vitamin C does help your body to absorb the iron, so maybe it's that. Also, classic in the Mediterranean, from Italy to uh, Turkey and all over, uh, you'd always serve steak with a squeeze of, with a, like a wedge of lemon, because it's just, mm, 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 makes my mouth water just thinking about it. So, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so well done, medium, raw, and then you, yeah. The thing with the ribeye is that it's very tender, especially on this one side over here. So it's kind of, I don't know. It, it, that's one way to check if it's done, but I think the best way to check if it's done is um, to just do a bunch of them. So as I said, I am going to uh, serve this beautiful thing sliced. <laughs> so, 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 so tender. Okay, now let me show you. This is my rare. Okay. So there, that is rare. So it is red in the middle. Ooh, and it is gorgeously crusted on the exterior. Um, I, I gotta go, I gotta go lie down. It's so good. Mm, the salt, the caramelized. Mm. I might have a hot flash. I really, really encourage you to do this tonight or tomorrow night or sometime. Um, it is a beautiful thing. I will post um, a recipe slash blog post uh, capturing, trying to capture all the kind of um, nuggets, wisdom, nuggets of wisdom um, that I've included. Oh my gosh, I can't, it's so good. It's so good. Guys, buy a good steak. Um, and that means a ribeye or a strip loin. Ribeye is really uh, cook it hot, hot, screaming hot with a goodly, goodly dose of salt in your cast iron frying pan. There was no oil in there or anything. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then let it rest. So those are three big important port, uh, pieces of cooking a great steak in a frying pan. And of course, with apologies to everybody who was watching, unplug the fire alarm before you start cooking. Thank you so much for joining me on the 20 Minute Cooking School. It is 4.20, and I will see you guys next week. If you have any more questions about steak, uh, feel free to ask them. Um, mm, I will be here. Um, and I, it has been such a pleasure 
So good. Love you guys. See you next week.